Hi friends, this week we're talking about self-control. And I'm gonna give it to you straight, as I always do. I'm gay, but I give it straight. <laughs> I'm here to share all the shit I've learned the hard way. Cause I've read over a hundred self-help books and I'm not being dramatic, like I read a lot. And this is everything I've found that's not in the books, okay? <laughs> this is the shit no one teaches you and no one tells you. And y'all know everything I share in my podcasts and my posts online is everything that I couldn't find when I was suffering. So all the answers, all the explanations, all the help I was looking for that no one could give me, I had to learn shit by going through it. So that's why I'm here to share it with you. I'm here to give you the answers that I couldn't find. So let's kick this off. I'm gonna give you a couple realizations and then we're gonna go deep and then deeper into it as we usually do. Okay, so first things first. Making the decision to do something and actually doing it are two different things, completely separate. And if you decide to do something without putting your actions behind it, it's useless. Like you're wasting your fucking time deciding what you want to do and what you want to try. Like it's nice and it feels good to think of new ideas and things you want to try, things you want to do. It's like all oh, these things sound nice and you're like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then when you don't follow through with it, all the energy you just spent deciding to do it is a waste. <laughs> so the people that are scared of wasting time, there's your first thing you could stop fucking doing is agreeing and deciding to do things that you know you're not actually going to do. Okay, so now that we got that cleared up, I'm going to make you aware of the next thing you need to know. And it's that you are in control of every action you take. Because every action you take is a decision. You have to decide to take an action or not take it. Like, you, you don't just, like, walk around and, like, shit just happens. Like, you decide to act or you decide not to act. But the thing to get with that is you're making decisions on the actions you take all day long. Even if you're on autopilot and you've just done the same shit over and over, you're still deciding to take those actions. So with the actions you take every day, there are consequences, good and bad, for every action you take. And the main thing that helped me shift my mindset around all of this is understanding that I am choosing my consequences all day, every day, with every action I take. So I'm in full control over my actions and I get to choose to take actions that are in line with what I want or not in line with it. It's up to me. But whenever you wanna start doing something new or something different, it's kind of a pain in the ass because you're used to how it feels to choose certain consequences. Like if there's things that you normally do and you normally live your life a certain way, for you to choose to do something different, it brings up a whole new set of feelings because you're used to feeling the way that you're used to choosing. So when you choose something new or something different, it's gonna feel a lot different. And a lot of people freak the fuck out because they're like, oh my God, no different is bad. It's like, you're just uncomfortable with it and it's just new. Just because a feeling is new or different does not make it bad. You're just not comfortable with it yet. Okay, but back to choosing your consequences. I'm gonna give you a couple examples because I sure as fuck needed some when I was trying to learn how to have self-control. Okay, so you know when your sleep schedule is bad and you've decided like at night, you're like, oh my God, tomorrow I'm gonna start waking up early. I'm gonna wake up at 7 a.m. I would say six, but that's too fucking early for me. Seven's pushing it, but I begin up at 7.30. <laughs> so you're gonna be excited at night because you're gonna be like, oh my God, I'm gonna get so much done tomorrow. I'm gonna wake up early and I'm gonna be so productive. I have all these things I'm choosing to do, all these things I wanna do that are gonna improve my life. But when the morning comes, that's a whole different motherfucker. That whole inspired and happy and excited person died when you went to sleep. Because you wake up in the morning and you're like, man, fuck this shit. But that's the feeling state you're used to. You're used to being in the bed and sleeping in or snoozing or not waking up when you said you're going to wake up. So it's going to be uncomfortable to get out of bed. Like who the fuck wants to get up when they're tired? No one. But that whole list of things that you decided was you were going to do with your day and was going to make everything better and you're going to be so productive. When your alarm goes off in the morning. Right there, you are faced with a decision. You are gonna take an action and choose to wake up and go in the direction of what you want or you're gonna choose to stay in bed and discard everything that you want. But you have to understand staying in bed is your choice. So you can choose to stay in the bed and choose the consequences that come with that, which is having a fucked up sleep schedule, not getting the shit done you said you were going to get done, delaying your day, waking up with a sense of regret. Those are all the consequences you can choose when you choose to keep your ass in bed. Or you can get up and choose all of the positive consequences that come with getting up early. But at the same time as you're choosing all the good things, you still have to choose the consequence of feeling tired. Which one do you want to choose? It's literally a choice with everything you decide to do. And when you lay it out in front of yourself like that, like choose. 
which thing do you want and which set of consequences do you want? Which one do you prefer? Laying it out like that in front of me and like imagining putting each option in my hands, like it makes it very clear it's a choice. I'm like, okay, which one do I want to choose? And then I choose it. But when you put it in front of your face, like it's a choice instead of saying, oh, I just can't get up. I'm so tired. That's bullshit. You are fully in control whether you get up or not. Because if I come in your fucking room and I light your room on fire, what are you going to do? Are you going to lay in bed? Oh, I just can't get up. Oh my, no, I'm just tired. I just can't get up. No, bitch. You're going to get up and take off running. Look at you all of a sudden out of bed. It's your choice if you get up or not. It's your choice if you take the actions that are in line with what you want. So that's the first thing to get. But I'm someone with a really weird relationship to complaining. Like I don't want to hear a fucking word out of someone's mouth if they're choosing against what they want. Like you don't get to whine. You don't get to ignore your alarm and sleep in and not get up and do what you said you were going to do and then sit there and complain and bitch and whine that you have a bad sleep schedule. Oh my God. No, you don't get to fucking complain. I only allow myself to complain while I'm moving toward and choosing the consequences I want. So I only let myself complain when I get up early and I'm tired and I'm fucking pissed and I'm like working toward what I need to work toward that's going to improve my life. That's when I'll let myself complain. I make myself shut the fuck up if I'm choosing against what I want. So if I stay in the bed and I wake up late one day and I'm like, oh my God, I shut myself up. I'm like, shut up and get your fucking day done now. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so my next example of choosing consequences is when you decide that you want to start eating healthy and you want to change the way that you look, whether it's gain weight, lose weight, whatever it is. Every single time you go to have food and you go to eat, you are making a choice of which consequences you want. You can choose food that is going to, like if I want to lose weight, I can choose to eat food that is going to allow me to lose weight or I can choose to eat food that's going to fucking make me gain weight. It's my choice each time, but there are consequences, positive and negative, for both. When I choose the good food, I'm like, okay, I'm choosing to have a good body in like a couple of weeks. Like, I'm going to look better. I'm going to feel better, but I might be a little hungry after I'm done eating. I'm not like fully satisfied. And maybe it didn't taste as good because I really want a goddamn cheeseburger, but I'm over here with my chicken and broccoli. So that's a negative consequence that comes with this decision is being a little hungry and then not tasting as good as you want. And you don't get that immediate gratification. And especially when you're upset, bitch, because I get that. Like when I'm upset, <gasps> kitchen watch out because I'm ready to tear it up. But if you flip it and you look at what choosing the bad food is going to do, it's going to make you gain weight or stay at the current weight that you're at. You're going to feel like shit. You will feel full. You will feel satisfied. Then you're going to feel that fucking guilt. Because you just threw away your fucking goals and you chose against what you're saying that you want. The other consequence is slowing yourself down and holding yourself back and losing trust with yourself because you're not doing what you said you wanted to do. But I'm going to talk about trust in yourself in a whole different episode. So I'm not going to get too much into it in this one. But you see how there's consequences, good and bad, for both decisions? You have to choose which ones you want. Like, every decision has good and bad consequences. Just... Pick the one that's most fucking like beneficial. They both suck, <laughs> but only one is going to get you toward what you want. So choose that one. Another example I can give to you about this is choosing to leave a job because when I was a nurse, I was so fucking scared to quit my job and I was so worried, but I had to face the reality of the situation I was in and then see the consequences of choosing to stay or choosing to leave. So choosing to stay Working as a nurse when I fucking didn't like it and working at the certain hospital I was at, I did not like it. I hated my life. I was eating fucking Xanax and trying to meditate in my car before my shifts. Like, I don't meditate. So that's saying something. But the consequence of staying at my job I was in was I felt like I was limiting myself. I hated my fucking life. I was miserable. I did not want to go to work. It started to impact my personal life and like my time away from work. I was miserable, dreading that I only had three days off before I had to go back to work again because I would have to work three 12 hour shifts in a row. And I fucking hated it. And I was working night shift. Ugh. But there were also positive consequences that w came with that job and staying in that job. So I had job security. I already knew the people I worked with. I had precepted there. So I was already familiar with everything. I knew the hospital. I knew all the operating systems. I was comfortable. I was safe. It was secure. It was consistent. I could work there until I died and have retirement and have everything set up. So there was a sense of stability that came with staying at that job. But there was also the negative. So there was positive and negative consequences. And then when I looked at leaving the job, I had to face those consequences. There was positive and negatives. 
I can find a job that I like more. I can do something where I don't want to fucking kill myself. <laughs> I can go somewhere where I don't feel like I'm just a warm body filling a spot. I can go where I actually feel valued and be able to actually contribute and be of use in the specific way that I can do it. Like I'm able to provide things that are more than just physically nursing someone and like charting and fucking dealing with that bullshit. Like, please. But then you flip it. And I also have the consequences of no more consistent money, no stability. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't have anything lined up. I don't know the people I'm going to work with next. I don't even know the fucking job I'm going to have next. So there's a lot of fear and anxiety. And there's a lot of feeling states inside this that are a negative consequence, like being unsure, feeling unstable, feeling scared. There was a lot of things I was feeling that were considered negative and scary on this side, but I was faced with the decision, which consequences do I want to choose? And it was up to me because each side came with positives and negatives. My ass chose to fucking leave because <laughs> I played the tape forward. I was like, okay, if I make myself stay in this job nursing at this hospital that I fucking hate, I'm going to decline my health, my mental state, my life. I'm not going to live a life I enjoy. So it's basically like sacrificing my life as I know it or the life that I could potentially have sacrificing it for this just because it's stable. Fuck that. You did not come to this life to die safely. Like we're all going to fucking die. So don't play it safe until you get to death. Like honestly, take your fucking risks, but don't try and come at me when you fuck your own shit up. You have to be self-controlled, but let's go into the next part of this. So the biggest thing with self-control is you have to prepare not to feel like it. Do you think I want to wake the fuck up early in the morning? Do you think I want to listen to audiobooks? Do you fucking think I want to eat chicken and broccoli? and eggs. No, bitch. Hell fucking no. There's some times where I'm like, yes, I feel good about this. Then there's other times where I'm like, this is the last fucking thing I want to do. Like literally like waking up this morning, I was like, shoot me before you make me get up out of this bed. <laughs> like just put me out. Euthanize me, bullet to the head. I don't care. I just don't want to get up. You know what I did? I still got the fuck up. But there are times where I feel inspired and I hop up out of bed. Then there are days where I'm like, just leave me to die. Like... Your feelings are going to be all over the fucking board. So you cannot rely on feeling like it to do what you need to do. And one thing I want to reassure you about is no one makes good decisions all the time. Like it's impossible to do that. We all fuck up. We all make mistakes. But I am going to teach you in the trust in yourself episode how to repair that and what to do when you do fuck up and choose like against what you were trying to do. You know, I'm going to get to that. But your feelings are very inconsistent. Like one day you're going to feel like it. One day you're not. I'm at the point where like every couple of hours I'd be feeling like it or not feeling like it. Like the more aware you get and the more in touch with your feelings you get, the more sporadic and unpredictable your feeling states are going to be. So for me to sit here and be like, I'm going to rely on my feelings to dictate if I do or don't do something, that's living my life as a fucking victim. Like I'm just going to fall prey to like the way that I'm <laughs> feeling. The way you feel you can't control. So I'm just going to sit here and just throw all of my power into my feelings where I can't control if I'm going to feel like it or not and let that determine if I do things or not do things, get fucked. Get fucked. My life got to the worst point when I allowed that to happen. But the thing that completely flipped everything and like made me have my life the way it is, like girl, I was struggling as fuck before, but like flipping and stop relying on your emotions to dictate if you're going to do shit or not. Stop waiting to feel like it and stop not doing things because you don't feel like it. You can be tired and still get out of bed. You can be hungry and still not eat. Like you just got to master that. And the way you can do that is by realizing your feelings are unreliable, but there is something that is reliable and that you have full control over. And that is your actions. You are fully capable and in control of every action you take. It's your decision to act or not. So like I said, if you're hungry, you can choose to act on the way that you feel or act in alignment with your goals. You can choose to eat or choose not to eat. You're in full control of your actions. If you're tired, you can choose to stay in bed or you can choose to get your fucking ass up. <laughs> but there's so much freedom in realizing your actions are the only thing reliable. Your feelings, they're great for like self-discovery and like, learning what you need to learn about yourself and like self-awareness and shit, but they're not good to rely on 
for dictating your actions. Like just don't rely on them. Like your actions are the only thing you can rely on. So show yourself you can rely on yourself by taking the actions you know you need to take, whether you feel like it or not. Complain on the way, babe. So look at it as like climbing a mountain. Getting to your goals is like climbing a mountain. Don't sit at the bottom and bitch and whine. Bitch and whine as you're climbing. Like I'm tired, I'm upset, I'm thirsty. Like as you're going up the mountain, allow yourself to complain as you climb. If you're sitting still at the bottom, shut the fuck up. Literally shut up because you're choosing to stay there. It's in your full control if you hop on that mountain and start climbing or if you stand there and bitch and whine. It's in your control and you look dumb because I'm up the mountain looking at you like, pindeja. <laughs> but there is a certain mental state that you're in where you convince yourself you can't do something because of the way that you feel. Like I have been incredibly heartbroken and I like didn't want to get up off the floor. But in my weakest moments, I force myself to get the fuck up. Because like I said, if you're heartbroken and you're like laying in the floor just like wailing and like crying and just like boohooing and like you're in the most emotional pain you've ever been in. If I walk in the room and light it on fire, your fight or flight mode will kick on. You're all of a sudden going to stop crying and your main priority is your sense of safety. You're able to get up and take care of yourself. So you can tap into that in any moment. It does not matter how much pain you're in. It does not matter how difficult something seems. You can still do it. I promise. I would not be sitting here preaching this shit if it wasn't true. I am giving preacher in this fucking Zephyr shirt. <laughs> Speaking of, if you like this shirt, I'm actually sponsored by the brand. So use code Leo if you want to shop. They have a lot of cool shit. But I promise you... You're capable of so much more than you realize. And you're only going to learn that by doing shit. Like you are able to withstand a lot more than you think. You're a lot more capable and a lot stronger than you think when you have to be. So if you understand if it's life or death, I can do it. I can choose at any moment to do it or not to do it. Like you're, you're fucking strong. I promise. Like you've literally got this. You're watching this podcast episode because you're committed to growing yourself. All right. Like my podcast is not for the week. So you're already of, ahead of a lot of people, <laughs> but I want to give you that reassurance and set you free from that mentally because I was trapped there for so long. And this is the shit that I wish someone would have told me, like just sucker punch me in the fucking head with all this information. Thanks. Like, Ah, uh, if I could have just like read one self-help book and it had all this shit in it, I would never have bought another one. <laughs> okay, so now I want to get really deep about this topic because this is like all the everything I've talked about before was great and a big key, but the next thing I'm going to talk about is the piece of awareness. Like I always say awareness is a curse. Awareness is a fucking bitch. Like it's great, but like once you become aware of something, you have to change everything you're doing. You can't just continue doing what you were doing once you're aware of more things. Like it becomes more difficult. So this is the thing that truly helped me become more self-controlled. And this is taking yourself into consideration. So I'm gonna have to give you like a physical analogy because this is how it works in my brain. But let's give the example of the part of me that wants to get in shape. So I will literally envision the part of me that wants to get in shape. Like I always do it as like a kid because it's so much easier to care about a kid than like an adult. I don't know why. That's just how society is. And that's how I am. Like I have a very, very big heart when it comes to children. They're my priority. I'll do anything to protect a kid. But envisioning like a small me, like a little me that wants to get in shape. I'm like, okay, here's little me that wants to have a good body and like be cute and be attractive and be healthy. Like I have to throw the be healthy in there too. Cause like, if I only worry about my appearance, I'm an asshole. <laughs> but I will envision this part of me that wants to get in shape. He has feelings. He has his own feelings. He has his own emotions. He has his own desires. And his desire is he wants to get in shape. So now that I'm aware of this part of me that wants to be in shape, for me to take actions that prevent me from getting in shape or sabotage me from getting in shape, I have to discard him to do it. I have to tell him, shut the fuck up and go away. It's not about you. I don't care what you want. I'm doing what I want. So when I'm in the kitchen and I'm like, 
I really don't want to eat chicken and broccoli right now. Like, I'm upset. I really just want to fucking binge. In order for me to binge, I have to throw him away. I have to tell him, shut the fuck up. What you want is not important. And, like, discard him to be able to go eat bad. So the way that I handle this part of me with every decision I make is I bring him to the table. I look at it like a conference table, not a dining table because I'm not fucking doing that. It's like a little council. Like, okay, I'm here to make decisions and I'm here to talk at this conference table about what I'm going to do next. And becoming aware of that part of me, I have to bring him to the table when I'm deciding which actions to take. I don't want to discard him. I want to make sure he gets what he wants too because I want it too. Like, he's just one part of me and one of my desires. But to give him what he wants is giving me what I want at the same time. So when I'm coming to like my council table and I'm like, I'm going to go decide to eat right now. I bring him to the table with me. And I like put my arm around him. And I say what he wants is important too. So we're going to make a decision. That gets me what I want and him what he wants. Like we're all in this together. I'm not going to just discard him and go eat what the fuck I want. I'm going to make sure he's taken care of and that he's considered. So look at it as bringing the part of you that wants something into consideration with every action you take. Get at the council table and bring that part of you to the table and sit them next to you. They're no longer discarded. You no longer throw yourself away. This topic gets me so like passionate. I have the chills. Like I'm like... This shit is like where you really transform your life. And this is how you actually become self-controlled because this is what did it for me. Like all the other shit that I've tried, it's like cutesy fun, whatever. But this is the thing that really made it work and be consistent because you'll try a lot of shit and it's cute for a minute and it wears off. But understanding that I have to take parts of me into consideration and not just discard them when I choose to take certain actions is so, so important. So now you're probably thinking, well, Leo, how the drive your fucking truck another time. I'm recording my podcast. (laughs) I already beat the fuck out of somebody this week. I can't do it like a bunch of times, but I know somebody's going to point out my knuckles and ask questions. So I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge it. I got into an altercation with someone two days ago. Some thug ran up on me at the gas station and thought he was going to get some money out of me. And when he didn't, he turned around and kicked the fuck fuck out of my car like girl just turn around and just full throttle kick my fucking car okay it's funny i'm talking about this and self-control at the same time because i chose to beat the fucking shit out of him for multiple reasons and i'm not justifying i'm just giving you an explanation because i'm not above violence because violence is a form of communication Communication is a scale, so I'm able to have very high-level conversations, or I can come down and meet you at the level of violence and beat the fuck out of you. Some people are not able to hear and understand things. They need to be shown. It's like when a dog, like you have a puppy, and it's shitting in the house. You can look at it and yell at it, hey, stop shitting in the house, stop shitting in the house. It does not understand. That's not the way it knows how to like perceive information and communicate. So you have to smack it on its little fucking ass when it shits in the house, so it realizes, oh, Maybe I shouldn't shit in the house because there's consequences for it. People are the same level of fucking dumb sometimes. They don't understand. So, like I said, I can communicate at a very high level, but I'm also equipped to talk to you on the level that I need to to get the information relayed. But with this situation, I used to be very violent in my past. Like, I grew up getting bullied, and I was, like, the one that everybody was harassing and bullying and beating the shit out of. And I would beg people to stop, and I would hope, and I would pray, and no one ever stopped. It only stopped the day that I had enough and I flipped and I just started a brutally attacking people who would fuck with me. Like I had to become my own protector because I was literally begging for help and no one would help me. No one would stop. The people that were doing shit to me would not stop. So a protector aspect of me was built. (laughs) And that aspect has never gone away and will never go away. And whenever I get scared, the protector aspect of me comes out and it's there to take over so in this situation with the guy like yeah you kicked my car and I should smack the fuck out of you for it but the real reason I attacked him was he didn't kick it and walk away he kicked it and started getting aggressive like it could go somewhere so he had a hoodie on and my initial thought is there's nothing in his hands I already scanned him 
And I'm like, if he's got something on him, I need to get him before he can pull it. Knife, gun, whatever it's going to fucking be. So my protector aspect kicked the fuck in and I was like scared. When I get scared, I'm very, very violent and aggressive. Like that's one thing that I'm still learning to kick. But I fear nothing. But I'm scared of a lot. <laughs> like I get startled easy. And whenever I feel like there's a threat to my safety, I throw caution to the wind. And I chose in that situation to get him before he could potentially get me. But honestly, he had a fucking come into him. But I promise you, he ain't going to fucking kick nobody's shit again. Because after I beat the fuck out of him, I started stomping on his legs. You ain't kicking a fuck thing no more, dude. You learned the hard way. I communicated with you at the level you needed. Now get fucked. And then I peeled out of there. Because I don't fuck with no cops. I don't call no cops. I don't deal with no shit like that. I got out of there. <laughs> I'm Albanian. <laughs> okay, so that fucking derailed. But I did want to give you guys an explanation. Y'all my friends. Y'all get it. We understand each other. <laughs> okay, so let's get back on track. Let's get back on to the self-help and the self-control. So knowing what actions you should take, just ask yourself with any situation, what action is going to get me closer to what I want? What action is in support and in contribution to me getting what I want? It's going to be different for every situation and it's going to change as you want new things and try new things and as you handle new situations. But the way that I always find out what I need to do or what I should do when I'm a little confused or I don't know what the fuck to choose, I'm like, I'm stressed, I'm upset, like I'm emotional, I'm not logical right now. Like I have to ask myself the logical question. Okay, it's not about how I feel. It's what is going to get me closer to my goals. And no matter how I feel, I know if I choose that action, I'm still moving forward toward what I want and co-creating with the universe. I don't like all that fucking spiritual shit. But like I'm co-creating with the universe, but I want. <laughs> okay, so my last tip for self-control is stop doing shit that makes it harder for you to have self-control. It's simple as that. Like it <laughs> really fucking is. But me a couple weeks ago, like I started smoking wheat. Like I can't say things on YouTube, but like I started like eating the ganja. Like I need to go to bed. <laughs> I was smoking to go to sleep and I noticed I get the munchies like a motherfucker. All right. And I can't control myself. Like I have self-control over food. I'm very good at it. But like when I get high, <laughs> it's so much harder to be disciplined. Like girl, the other night I was, I'm on a meal plan. I have a nutrition coach and he like tells me what to eat. I have a full meal plan. All my meals are scheduled and planned and weighed to a fucking T. But other night I got like, I got high and I went in to go eat and I had nothing left on my meal plan. I was like, oh my God, like all I have is green beans. What the fuck am I going to do with some green beans? So I'm in there with the munchies eating fucking green beans like an idiot. But then I was like, okay, so I'm going to try and outsmart the system. I'm going to keep smoking, but I'm just going to save one of my meals for after I smoke so that I can eat. And I tried it <laughs> a couple of times. I tried it. But me, when I get high and I start eating, I can't stop. Oh, I can stop. I can choose to stop. But like, it's really hard. It's like 10 times harder to stop eating. So I save my last meal for after I smoke. And then I would eat. And then I would notice I was like running around looking for more shit. Like I was wanting to continue to eat. And it made it extremely hard to be disciplined and have self-control. So you know what I did? I stopped fucking smoking girl, I'll just go the fuck to bed. <laughs> like, Go read a fucking book. Go fucking fiddle your diddle. Go do what you got to do. Go your ass to bed. You ain't got to smoke to go sleep. But the main thing with that, like it's right in front of me. Like that's the thing with self-control is removing the thing that you want and removing the temptation is not true self-control. You're just eliminating your ability to access it. When you have it in front of you and you choose not to do it, that is self-control. So all these people that are like, oh, in the house, like throw away all your bad food if you want to diet. That's not real self-control. It might help, but you're not building true resilience and you're not learning true self-control. It's like, I know the consequences that come from hitting this and it's sitting in front of me at all times. I can choose to or I can choose not to. And I choose not to. And that builds my trust in myself every time I choose not to. And it establishes like more self-control because I'm like, Okay, I controlled myself all these other times. I can do it now too. Like I can choose not to do it. But facing the consequences, like when I see this pen, I see the consequences, good and bad, that come with it. 
and I choose not to have those consequences. So I don't hit it, but just stop doing shit. That's going to make things harder for you to have self-control. So it can take the form of a lot of different things, but also I learned do things to make it easier for you to have self-control. Cause like with my meal plan, if I don't have my shit prepped, I'm aggravated. I'm pissed off. And when I'm pissed off, I, I'm more tempted to make different decisions than the ones I need to make to be in alignment with my goal. So I meal prep. I get all my shit ready and prepped and there it's like, so when I go in, I just make the meal real quick. Everything's prepped and I fucking eat. So do things that are going to help you be more self-controlled and stop doing things that you see are limiting you. So I do want to let you guys know, I started a donation page for this podcast and every week, the highest donation, whoever donates the highest amount, you're going to get a free one-on-one zoom call with me. And that's every week. So my podcast episodes come out on Sunday. So by every Sunday, whoever sends in the highest donation, you're going to get a free one-on-one Zoom call with me. Whatever you want to talk about, whatever you need help with, whatever you want to address, I've got you and I'll get you through it. But if you enjoyed this episode, leave this video a thumbs up if you're watching it on YouTube and if you're listening to it on the podcast, leave me five stars. I really hope this episode helped you. And if you have any topics you want me to make future episodes about, you can comment on the YouTube video that we have here. Or if you don't want it public because you don't want people in your fucking business, you can just DM me on Instagram. I'll leave all my links to all my things in the description of this episode. So if you want to keep up with me anywhere, click it, follow me, send me a message. But leave me a comment in this video if you're watching this on YouTube. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think of this. Because I love to hear your feedback. It keeps me going. You know, it's a nice validation. That's all I got for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching or listening. Whatever you chose to do. Be safe. Damn it. Take care of yourself. Don't be afraid to defend yourself at the same time though. Like, watch your own ass and take care of yourself. But I will talk to you guys next Sunday.